Hello guys, today we're going to discuss inverse trigonometric functions and their derivatives. Learning objectives are, so we will briefly discuss uh, the inverses of tangent x, cotangent x, secant x, and cosecant x. Then we will discuss the derivative formulas for arc sine, which is uh, sine inverse, arc tan and the arc secant and also uh, the remaining three inverse trigonometric functions so let's get started so let's recall uh, section 1.6 where we to some certain extent discussed how to find inverses of functions uh, including the inverse of three functions we especially concentrated on cosine of and sine so arc sine and arc cosine <coughs> And um, one of the issue was uh, about existence of inverses. So for existence of inverse, we need to know that the function is one to one. How do we know the one to one? Well, we, we saw the horizontal line test, right? So each horizontal line has to intersect the, the graph at most once, right? And then we, we define the inverse. Again, as, as you can see, uh, if your function is one to one, then only you can define the inverse. However, uh, what was the problem with our three functions, like like the sine function? It, it doesn't pass the horizontal line, right? If, if I look at the horizontal lines, uh, it intersects infinitely many uh, points of the graph, right? So, <clears throat> so that was a problem. And then uh, the idea was if you restrict the three functions to certain intervals then it becomes uh, one to one and then we can take the inverse right so basically uh, this is how we define the arc sign so arc sign is a number between minus pi half and pi half so this is the restriction that we made right so this is the the <clears throat> section for which the sine y is equal to x so this is going to be my range for arc sine and the range for arc cosine is zero pi okay so this was the convention so we need to know this okay so you need to remember <clears throat> so graphically this is this is this is these these are the graphs of inverses how about the inverses of tangent x cotangent x secant x and cosecant x so here they are we have uh, the range for the tangent or arc tangent is minus pi half to pi half and we fix the the range for cotangent inverse between 0 and pi All right so so for, for tangent this is like arc sine for cotangent this is like arc cosine and then we have uh, for the secant inverse arc secant it's 0 and pi and and then uh, for the uh, cosecant inverse it's minus pi half and uh, pi half the the differences that we can see are here uh, the equality is not uh, included right so these uh, these are the distinctions but for sine and cosine they are included so recap basically the minus pi half and pi half is the range for arc tangent tangent inverse uh, for the cotangent it is zero pi so i'm looking for a number uh, between zero pi so that cotangent y is equal to x and for secant uh, here is the range and for cosecant here is the range so we need to remember these things we can, we can do a quick example let's say that i would like to find uh, tangent inverse of one right so how, how do we do it well so i'm looking for a y if this is equal to y right if i let this equal to y then i'm looking for a y in this interval minus pi half and pi half such that my tangent y is equal to x but what is my x it's one right well when do we have uh, tangent y equal to 1 
one obvious case is 45 degree, right? Pi over 4. And is pi over 4 in, in here? Yes. So that's the question. Yes. So, so we're done. So it means the tangent inverse of 1 is equal to pi over 4. Remember, when we take the inverse of three functions, we are obtaining angles, right? We are obtaining angles. So it's it's very really normal to get something like pi uh, over 4, etc. So our first theorem is uh, regarding the inverse of sine. So the theorem says that uh, the derivative of sine inverse of u is 1 over square root 1 minus u square uh, times du dx. Clearly, du dx is coming from the chain rule, right? Where I regard u as a function of x. Okay, let's let's try to uh, prove. So let's say that uh, I'm if I let f of x is equal to sine of x, then f inverse of x is sine inverse of x. Now let's uh, remember the how we related the derivative of inverse to the derivative itself. So derivative f inverse was 1 over f prime of f inverse of x, right? Well, what is f prime? Derivative of sine, which is cosine of x, right? Cool. So what we have is the derivative of sine inverse of x with respect to x is 1 over cosine of f inverse. f inverse is sine inverse of x. Oh, all right, now the next question is what is cosine of sine inverse of x? Remember, we can think of this as an angle theta, right? So here is here's the triangle. Let's say that this is my theta. Then what is this? So uh, if the sine inverse of x is theta, then sine theta is x. So for example, I can pick it to be here, x. Here I can pick 1. Then sine theta will be x over 1. So this is perfectly fine. Now, so now I'm looking for cosine of theta, right? So this is 1 over cosine of theta. What is cosine of theta? It's this part of the triangle divided by 1. So I need to find this part right here. Well, by Pythagorean theorem, what is it? It's 1 minus x squared in square root, right? So this is going to be this is going to be 1 over 1 minus x squared divided by 1, right? So this is exactly what we have right here when we have uh, u instead of x. Let's do an example. Let's say that I want to find the derivative of sine inverse of x to, let's say, power 4. So my u is equal to x to the 4, right? So this is 1 over square root of 1 minus u squared times du dx. And then I get 1 minus. So u is equal to x to the 4, which becomes x to the 8 times du dx. What is the derivative of x to the 4? It's 4 times x cube. Okay, uh, now the derivative of uh, arctangent is 1 over 1 plus u squared times du dx. Again, let's quickly try to see why it is the case. Again, I, I look at f of x equal to uh, tangent x, so that my f inverse of x is equal to arctangent or tangent inverse of x. And again, I remember that the derivative 
of the inverse is 1 over f prime of f inverse of x right okay what was the derivative of uh, the tangent if you remember the past lectures it was secant square x thus if i take the derivative of uh, tangent inverse i get 1 over so f prime is secant square secant square and uh, in place of x i have i have uh, tangent inverse of x okay what is secant it's one over cosine hence this becomes in fact cosine square tangent inverse of x let's imitate the, the previous trick that we did so here's my theta so i regard tangent inverse of x as my theta and then this means uh, tangent theta is equal to x it means here if i let x here it becomes one then my hypotenuse becomes x square plus one in square root so then what do we get here so we get uh, this is cosine square theta right so this is cosine square theta from the triangle we read that cosine is equal to one over one over square root of x square plus one but because this is squared squared and the square root will cancel each other so i i will get x square plus one in the denominator right so that verifies this part and the, the, the remaining part comes from the chain rule one example let's say that i want to find the derivative of arc tangent or tangent inverse x cube so my u is equal to x cube we know that this is one over one plus u square du dx well u is equal to x cubed so this is one plus x to the six du dx becomes three times x squared what is the derivative of secant inverse well the derivative of secant inverse is one over u in modulus multiplied by square root of u square minus one multiplied by du dx where my absolute value of u must be bigger than one so considering the similar uh, ways that we proved the previous two results you can also do the same but uh, uh, i will avoid the proof uh, now and leave it as an exercise so instead i will do an example so let's say i want to take the derivative of secant inverse of 7x to the power 4. Well, by the theorem, this is 1 over absolute, absolute value of u multiplied by u square minus 1 times du dx. Right? And where my u is uh, 7x to the 4. So this is going to be 1 over 7 x to the 4 so i don't need absolute value because this is already positive and here i have if you square the 7 x to the 4 it becomes 49 x to the 8 minus 1 apply by du dx which is 7 times 4 is 28 x cube as a result of power rule so how about the the derivatives of inverse of cosine cotangent and uh, cosecant well we can derive it from the following identities right just taking the root of both sides we already know the derivative of sine tangent and secant hence we can handle the derivative of cosine cotangent and cosecant right but the uh, interesting question is where did we get these three identities so let me simply illustrate the first one what we know is 
um, cosine theta is equal to sine pi over 2 minus theta, right? This is what we know. Let's say this is equal to x. Then what is my uh, cosine inverse of x? It's theta. Well, from, from the second part, what do I have? I have uh, this is x, right? So which means the sine inverse of x is pi over 2 minus theta, right? So if you solve for the theta here, what is this? Theta equal to pi over 2 minus sine inverse of x, right? So this was my theta, so they are equal, etc. So using the identities from the previous slides, it's evident how to find the inverses of cosine, cotangent, and cosecant. As you can see, the, the inverse of cosine is just negative of the inverse of sine. How do we get it? So let, let, let's, let's see. From the previous slide, we know that cosine inverse of u is equal to pi over 2 minus sine inverse of u, right? So if I, if I go ahead and I take the derivative of both sides, what's going to happen? Here will I get the d dx cos inverse of u. On the right, pi over 2, this is a constant, so it becomes simply a 0 minus the derivative of sine inverse. So this is d dx sine inverse of u. And then remembering the sine inverse of u from right here, we see that the only difference is this negative sign, right? So this negative sign. So the similarly, uh, for cotangent, it, there is only one difference with tangent. It's just a negative. And for the cosecant, again, once you know what is uh, the derivative of secant inverse, the cosecant becomes simply minus of the derivative of secant. I'll stop here.